Good morning, folks. Davis County Judge Executive Al Mattingly here, and it's December the 22nd, roughly 8 a.m. in the morning, and we are all anxiously awaiting the first major winter storm uh, to come through our area in quite some time. Uh, it's been a while since we've had below uh, freezing temperatures, below zero temperatures, and certainly been a long while uh, since we've had uh, wind chill factors down 15 to 30 below. So this evening, the weather service is predicting uh, rain most of the day, and then this evening, the wind is gonna blow a, an Arctic storm through our community. And I just wanna take some time to talk to you about some of the things that you can do to keep yourself and your family and your property safe. First of all, you probably know that the governor has declared a state of emergency for the entire Commonwealth. Uh, I often get questions about why doesn't Davis County declare a state of emergency. Uh, really, uh, the only thing a state of emergency does is it suspends normal operations at fiscal court, meaning that we can go out and without bidding items out, we can just purchase things, we can hire people, uh, we can hire contractors, we can do those kinds of things. It doesn't mean that you have to stay at home, it doesn't mean that you can't be out on the roads. Certainly if a state of emergency has been declared, you need to be very careful because oftentimes it, it actually st says that things aren't really normal and when things aren't normal, bad things happen sometimes. So. Let's, let's talk about the, the temperature first. Uh, you know, when you get down in single digits, and I'm talking about single digits above zero, it often takes, oh, 24 hours, 36 hours for that to affect things like your, your water freezing or uh, drain lines freezing under houses or under mobile homes. But when you have winds that are 20 and 30 miles an hour, it speeds things up. And that's because that wind has a, a, a way of wiping the heat, the heat envelope that's around your home away, and so things will freeze. You'll lose heat faster, things will freeze quicker. So some of the things that you need to do prior to uh, this st storm coming through would be number one, and, and the most important is go outside and find your water meter know where the water meter is because if that water meter has to be shut off and there's three or four inches of snow over it, it's hard to find. They're not all in the same place. So know where your water meter is, mark the location, find your gas meter and uh, know how to turn the gas meter off if you happen to have a bad gas leak. Um, next thing that you need to do is inspect the crawl space around your home and make sure the air grates are sealed. And you can do that pretty easily. Just cut a piece of cardboard that measures a little bit larger than the air grate and push it up in there to where it's wedged in place. And that will keep the wind from blowing under the house, wiping all the heat out that's generated by the duct work and that's lost through the floor. And it will help keep the water pipes from freezing, the drain lines from freezing. The crawl space door, that little access door or access panel, make sure that it is hooked and in place, and it's solid in place. Winds have a way of blowing things down that just lean up against it. So that's something that you need to do right now. Uh, go out and make those inspections. If you're on a concrete slab, not so much. Uh, the slab, kind of, all that pipe is under the slab for the most part, so you're not gonna have a problem, except if your water pipe is run overhead. If your water pipe is running in an attic, then it stands, the, there is a chance that it would, would freeze. Many times people think, well, I've got to get that frozen pipe thawed so that it doesn't burst. Well, let me tell you that the pipe's already burst. Once the water freezes, the pipe has burst. Now, copper, steel, plastic pipe freezes and they burst. There is a pipe called uh, a PEX piping uh, it's polyethylene extruded pipe that it will freeze, but when it does, it swells up. Typically, it doesn't burst, and when it's thawed, it comes back uh, to the same shape. If you have a pipe that's, that's frozen up in the attic, probably the best way to, to handle that, if you handle it yourself, is with a hairdryer. Take a hairdryer 
and just kind of heat the pipe foot by foot until you finally have the water break loose. One of the best things you can do is during those extreme temperatures is perhaps leave a little hot water and cold water running. Water running through the pipe continues to bring heat into the system and it, can, and it uh, prevents any, any uh, freezing. Go outside and make sure your lawn faucets, the hoses are disconnected from the lawn faucets. If you have lawn faucets that are exposed or that are dripping, and then take a plastic bag uh, with some newspaper in it, wrap it around it and tape it to the lawn faucet. That gives it some insulation, protects it from the wind. There are all kinds of things that you can do. You just have to kind of think through them. If you, if you do have frozen pipes, then what you want to do is make sure that you're around someone's home because when they thaw, if they have burst, then you could have a real problem in the house. Uh, the, another example of one of the things that you can do is if you have a, a kitchen cabinets on the outside wall and a kitchen sink, then you can open the cabinet doors and that allows some warm air to circulate up under there. Sometimes if a kitchen sink, uh, water lines freeze or drain lines freeze, you can set a little electric heater and, and direct the airflow up, up into that direction. Please do not use blow torches. Please do not use open flames. Save that for the experts, save that for the professionals. And even sometimes they have a, an issue. Let's talk about what happens if, uh, if you lose power. And that's a real possibility. Anytime you have snow and, and uh, high winds, you can lose power for a while. And when you lose power, uh, your furnace doesn't work. There are a few furnaces that generate their own electricity, but for the most part, modern furnaces, 99.9% .9 of them now all have to have electrical inputs. So if you lose power, you have no heat. Well, maybe you have a set of gas logs in your fireplace. If that's the case, you can open the doors into the family room or where the fireplace is, turn those gas logs on. If it's an electronic ignition, most of those are self-generated ignitions. So you can get the gas logs lit and open the doors and you should be able to keep some of that heat circulated throughout the house. Uh, your furnace, your gas furnace needs the power to operate. So you can't, you don't have a fan that you can move around. You don't have an exhaust fan. I remember my mom when we were little, she would always light the burners on the stove and use that to warm the kitchen. And you can do that, but just remember that, that those, those flames do not have a vent to the outside. So there's always a possibility if the flame is not adjusted correctly that you will create carbon monoxide. And carbon monoxide is a very deadly gas. It's odorless, uh, colorless. And uh, the only way that you know that you have some problems is you'll start feeling a little drowsy, your eyes will burn, maybe you get nauseated. Uh, please be very careful. Do not leave a, a kitchen stove burning while you're asleep or when you go to sleep. One of the things that people forget is their gas water heater. Now, unless you have a tankless water heater, most gas water heaters do not require electricity. So you have a tank, 40 or 50 gallons of water. Now this is a gas water heater, not an electric water heater. If you have an electric water heater, you have no power, so you're not gonna have any hot water. But if you have a gas water heater, you can go into your bathroom and fill a bathtub full of hot water. Now that hot water will radiate heat into the bathroom for quite some time. Uh, you can do that before you go to bed. You'll wake up in the morning with a toasty bathroom. The pipes will not freeze. Uh, you can do that in the kitchen. You can fill the kitchen sink full of hot water and it will radiate heat for a while. Uh, and that gas water heater will come on, renew the 40 or 50 gallons that are in there and you can continue to use that to add some heat into, into the house. So it's, it's uh, very important that you keep doors closed and you, you cover up all those air leaks that you might have. I know at home we have a utility room and the utility room's kind of stuck like a, a sore thumb 
and I can feel a cold air coming under the door because there's no weather stripping there. So in a really cold winter, we'll roll up a towel and just lay it at the door. I've just stopped cold air from getting into the room or hot air from leaving the room. So it's, it's extremely important that you, you know where your utility shutoffs are. It's extremely important that you are aware of your surroundings when it comes to using flame to heat that's not vented. And there are some things that we just discussed that, that you can do. Uh, this is a, uh, a very dangerous storm. I think if you watch on TV or YouTube or any video, uh, you're going to find that it doesn't take very long to be exposed to 15 to 30 below zero wind chill for you to end up with frostbite. So bundle up. Uh, enjoy the, this, this experience, this winter storm. Uh, hopefully by, by uh, Saturday morning, Christmas Eve, the worst of it will be gone and we will be able to enjoy a, a white Christmas and, and Christmas-like temperatures. Just remember that next week uh, on New Year's Eve, it's supposed to be in the 60s. Welcome to Kentucky. <laughs>